I thought what I would do would be to talk to you, since many of you are patients and families, in a way that's very similar to the way I talk to patients and their families when they come into my office. Everybody knows by this time the number of patients yearly in this country who will get the disease. I want to remind you of the fact that 80%, 85% of all of the patients who develop this disease have already, by the time the diagnosis is made, um, had the disease advance to the point where an operation is not even a realistic possibility. Uh, and the reason for that has been the cancer that started in the pancreas has already spread. It's spread to the liver or it's spread to the lungs. And so if you do the math, the 43,000 or so people in this country who will develop the disease in this year, uh, only 6,000 or so will even have the opportunity to go to the operating room and see whether a surgeon can remove the tumor. And as it turns out, probably something in the neighborhood of only about 3,500 or 4,000 of those patients will end up having the tumor removed. In order to be able to resect one of these tumors, the tumor has to be localized. We can't have distant metastases to, as I've already mentioned, most commonly the liver or the lungs. Uh, there also should not be evidence of spread of the tumor to distant lymph nodes. Now, we normally take out lymph nodes when we do the operation to remove the cancer, but we take them out in the area of the pancreas where the tumor has begun to grow. The other thing we, we uh, will not resect tumors uh, if the tumor itself, the primary cancer in the pancreas, has invaded or involved some of the big blood vessels. So even if the tumor is localized, no spread to the liver, no spread to the lungs, if the tumor is involving some of the blood vessels, that's a bad sign. Now, this obviously is a, is a picture of the pancreas and the organs around it. The pancreas is hiding back here uh, behind the stomach, uh, and so that's part of the reason that uh, it's difficult to expose in some patients who, on whom we operate. But uh, if you realize the pancreas is back here, one of the things that I talk about with patients and their families as I begin to explain what the operation may involve uh, is the fact that when we eat or we drink, the food and the liquid come down the esophagus, come into the stomach, and eventually empty from the stomach through the duodenum. The pancreas, of course, is here. I want to make a point, because I'm going to talk about it a little bit later, uh, that in many of these patients, the tumor will either be in the head or somewhere in the tail of the pancreas. This is an example of a tumor in the tail of the pancreas. Uh, but even if it gets bigger in this area, it still remains localized. It still generally remains uh, resectable. So that's a situation where we ought to be able to get the tumor out. We're not worried about spread. We're not worried about involvement of any of the major blood vessels. Much more commonly, however, the tumor is in the head of the pancreas, and that's what this is meant to represent. Even if it grows to a larger size in that area, it's still, because it's away from some of these other major structures, it's still resectable, which is to say it's localized, it's still removable surgically. So enlarging upon this uh, business for who do we resect, who don't we resect, um, we have to add to it, as I've suggested a little bit ago, that when the major blood vessels are involved, that's not a good sign. A tumor having reached that stage, we know from experience, has already spread microscopically to other areas in there that are not going to be removed by the, the surgical resection.